Last week I posted online, Green Lantern is the greatest superhero movie of all time. Change my mind. Now I'll be honest, I didn't expect that anyone would try to change my mind. I just figured that we were all on the same page. And yet people said stuff like this. Watch the movie, that'll change your mind. Huh. Well, that is a pretty good idea. I've never actually seen the Green Lantern, I just like the color green, and since there's no other green superheroes, I just assumed that Green Lantern was the best. But I should probably watch the movie before I jump to any conclusions. Well, it's clear to see that I was definitely right. Best superhero movie of all time. Did you see the green Hot Wheels thing? I just don't understand why people don't love this masterpiece. Well, Boring Canadian says, ask Ryan Reynolds. He seems to have a strong opinion on the matter. Well, that is a good idea, Boring Canadian. Let's see what our country's prime minister thinks of Green Lantern. If you could rate the Green Lantern on a scale of one to 10. It didn't four. work. I'm, I'm, it didn't I'm, work. Yeah, one. It's a one. Oh, it's a one. <laughs> okay, well, it was probably opposite day on that day or something like that because look how happy he is in this behind the scenes footage. He sure did love playing Green Lantern and how excited he was on the red carpet. So it's got everything in there. There's a little bit of romance, a little bit of humor, a ton of action and there's some heart as well. Prime Minister Reynolds is right. Green Lantern's got everything in there. A little bit of romance, a little bit of humor, a ton of action and yes, <laughs> some heart. And besides, lying on a red carpet premiere is like lying under oath. So we'll just have to take Reynolds at his word here. Let's put aside what Canada's King thinks. Green Lantern is the greatest superhero movie of all time. But before I prove it, I suspect that some of you haven't seen the movie in a while, or at all. So I've prepared a brief summary. <clears throat> Hal Jordan is a kid who loves planes. After sprinting directly onto a top secret military base, which this guy is supposed to be guarding, young Hal witnesses his dad crash a plane and perish in a fiery explosion. Fast forward a few years and Hal and his childhood best friend Carol have become test pilots themselves. After a traumatic flashback, Hal loses control of his plane during a test flight and then mopes about it for half the movie. Then, unexpectedly, a mortally wounded alien named Abin Sir summons Hal to take over his role in the Green Lanterns. Hal gets this cool ring and is sucked into space, where he's given further training by some of the finest characters ever produced by the PlayStation 1. Then a bunch of other stuff happens, and as Mr. Griff 305 puts it, Green Lantern was an epic movie that taught me it's okay to feel fear or something, and I couldn't have worded it better myself. Hal conquers his fears or something, and everything works out well. So, we're all in agreement, right? Perfect movie, best picture, every single year. I can't change a mind that's already broken. <gasps> <clears throat> I guess we're not all in agreement, but surely most people think it's a masterpiece. Technically, opinions can't be wrong, but damn, please reconsider. I I'm glad we're at least being technical here. When was the last time you visited a doctor? You seem to need consultation for your mental health. If by change your mind, you mean replacing your brain with one that actually works. Sorry, I'm not a doctor. Doctor? Uh, you mean Doctor Strange? But- It wasn't as bad as it gets blamed for being. Some of it was quite good. The mask and suit, however, were a horrible idea or just horribly executed. Well, okay. This is one of the most positive comments I've found, so uh, I'll take it. But honestly, I don't think the suit looks that bad. Oh, Especially for a movie made in 2003. <clears throat> Um, well, the makeup was good, right? This movie paved the way with their groundbreaking work in prosthetic foreheads. Now, what do you think, lowercase caps? It was actually ahead of its time, TBH. The quality of the CGI was something viewers just couldn't wrap their minds around. And using a cloud slash smoke as the main big bad? I mean, have you ever heard of such a thing before? Come on, man. That's right, if you don't like the CGI, it's just because it was pushing boundaries, taking you to a new planet you've never been before, and I'm not talking about the planet in Green Lantern. No, I'm talking about a new planet in your mind. A mind palace. Moving along, Paul says, casting was amazing, especially for Sinestro. And I completely agree. Mark Strong, who is a consistently great actor, is very compelling as Sinestro. He's intimidating, but you understand why he's doing everything that he's doing and why he doesn't like Hal. I'd also extend that compliment to Peter Sarsgaard's weirdo performance as Hector Hammond. I mean, look at this reaction shot when his dad snubs him at an event. Haha, <laughs> weird acting choice, Peter Sarsgaard, but we love to see it. And we're not 
not the only fans of Hector Hammond. Kirk says, can't argue with that one. After all, it had a big scary cloud and Mr. Scrotum Head, the peak of movie villains. Exactly, Mr. Scrotum Head rules. Even in heavy makeup, Sarsgaard gives a fun, engaging, and even sad performance as Hector. Not only is he the peak of movie villains, he's actually a lot more likable and relatable than Hal Jordan. But we're gonna get into that later. Before we do, Let's talk about Thor Ragnarok, because that film wouldn't even exist without Green Lantern. Green Lantern arrived in 2011, an awkward transitional year for superhero movies. The Dark Knight and Iron Man had come out three years prior, and the industry was struggling to replicate them. But those two films sent superhero movies in two very different tonal directions. Iron Man brought the self-aware quip back into the comic book movie, while Dark Knight aimed for gritty realism. Green Lantern aimed straight down the middle, and audiences rejected it. But Green Lantern's failure became an inspiration for Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Look, if Green Lantern was a massive hit, there's no way I would have been able to make Deadpool. After the film's poor reception, Reynolds doubled down on his pursuit of Deadpool, the character he was born to play. If Green Lantern had been a hit, the Deadpool movies may have never happened. Not to mention the fact that Reynolds and Blake Lively met on this film and married soon after. They even had two kids. Two human beings exist because of Green Lantern. Now we're gonna pause here and we're just gonna let that sink in for a moment. Two kids. I know, right? Then there's Taika Waititi. Green Lantern was partially shot in New Zealand and Waititi nabbed the comic relief role as Hal's best friend. Waititi doesn't get a ton to do, but even in his brief scenes, you can tell he's struggling with the American accent. Ultimately though, this was a good thing because if hypothetically Green Lantern was a massive hit and Taika was better in it, it's likely that Taika would have received more comic relief work as a Hollywood actor. If that was the case, he might have abandoned his directing work in New Zealand this would mean he'd never make his unique low-budget comedy, What We Do in the Shadows, a movie that set him on the path he's on today. Um, amazing. Thank you. So that being said, no Green Lantern, no Thor Ragnarok. That is how you make movies. And yet the absolute most important historical thing about Green Lantern was brought up by Olia. They say, it was so good that people were scared of making a movie as good as it ever again. So yes, Green Lantern is historically important, but why exactly is it the greatest superhero movie of all time? Well, here's the thing. Some may say the Green Lantern is bad, but I say Green Lantern is bad on purpose. It is a brilliant satire about how the very concept of superheroes is flawed. Now stay with me on this. Here's how the movie introduces Hal Jordan. He almost gets into a car crash because he's taping up a gift while driving. Then he calls the other driver an a-hole, even though it's clearly his fault. He shows up late for his job. Yes, but that's only because I slept in. He's selfish and reckless at work. He's coasting off his dad's reputation. And he also punches a guy through a wall for a uh, very little reason. And the guy might not have survived. Now, you'd expect Hal to change throughout the movie, but he doesn't. Basically, what I'm saying is this. Hal is not super or heroic. Certainly not super heroic. Even his name is like an unheroic version of Michael Jordan. Mike Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan? <laughs> Coincidence? I don't think so. This movie had seven writers, so I'm pretty sure they knew what they were doing. Green Lantern dares to ask, what if a superhero was not only a snarky, selfish jokester, but they also weren't all that smart, or talented, or charismatic? Would an audience still accept that person as the hero of a superhero movie? Well, for the most part, audiences didn't, but that was on purpose. Your rejection of Hal is supposed to make you realize the ring made a mistake. When the Power Ring chose Hal as the hero of the story, despite him doing nothing to deserve it, the ring was wrong. The ring should have chosen Hector Hammond, a kind, empathetic scientist who resents that he's only given opportunities in life because of his famous father. Green Lantern dares to ask what would happen if the chosen one in a movie was actually the wrong person for the job? What if Luke Skywalker or Harry Potter or even Norm of the North was so clearly the wrong choice. Now, that's a funny idea, and yet Green Lantern has the confidence to play it straight. So yes, on its surface, Green Lantern may appear to be an extremely mediocre superhero movie, but I believe that a lot of what makes this film so easy to hate actually makes it the greatest superhero movie of all time. And besides, none of this really matters because even before I watched the movie, I knew it was gonna be the greatest. After all, he's a green superhero. There's no other green superheroes. 
And wait a minute. Prince of Pled says, it's not even the best superhero movie with a green protagonist. Wait, wait. There are others? You have to kind of just show people something they've never seen before. I mean, that's what I like when I go see an action movie, like... What do we call it? The Green Hornet. <laughs> so, what do you think? Did we crack the code on one of the most hated superhero movies of all time? Did we convert any of you to the Green Lantern is Good camp? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant.